Welcome to BPEC YouTube channel. So today we will be learning about in-depth data engineering roadmap for 2024. So now whenever we are going for a data engineer, what exactly a data engineer's responsibility? Very simple. Data engineer's responsibility is to collect the data from multiple sources. What do you mean by multiple sources? It can be a website. For example, example of website is Amazon. So let's say Amazon is a website. I need to collect the data from a Amazon and I want to store it. So Amazon, it may not be only website where they generate the data. So they generate the data through reviews in the YouTube or they will be generating the data, finance data going to be generated. They may run advertisement campaigns, advertisement related data going to be generated. All this data need to be stored in a particular repository. So there are two types of repositories. We have it in a real world. One, we call it as a data lake. What is meant by data lake? We try to store all unstructured data in a data lake. So we are what what is the methodology we implement is we try to implement ELT methodology. So we extract the data from a website, we load it into a data lake. When there is a requirement, we clean it. So as a data engineer, you need to have this responsibility, you need to learn it. And the next one is we try to store in a particular structured tool or a structured platform, which we call it as a data warehouse. So where we will be learning ETL operation. We extract the data. We transform the data and we load the data. So for that reason, we store it in a data warehouse. Now we all are aware of data warehousing platform. So one of our traditional data warehousing platform is our SQL. So now we need to master SQL. So why? So your responsibility is like extracting the data from a website, doing ETL operation and storing in a data warehouse. So for that, you need to master SQL. And apart from it, to do various transformation activities, we got Altrix, we got Informatica, we got Talent. In this way, we got various tools. What is that? Apache and Nifi. In this way, we have various tools. Apart from it, we are able to do data ETL, data cleaning with the help of Python as well. So that's the reason you need to master Python skill set, which is very, very important. Now, you are cleaning the data with Python. So you are mastering Python. So you are mastering Oops. You are mastering your pandas, mostly pandas, NumPy. So if possible, mas mastering some web scraping commands. And once you completed this, then you need to master your SQL. In SQL, you need to learn about your data warehousing concepts, data lake concepts. You need to learn about various data modeling techniques. You need to learn about your star schema and snowflake schema ER diagrams. All this falls under a category of your data modeling. You need to master it. And after that, in case if you want to learn DSA, it is not mandatory, but if you want to learn it, you can learn it. There is no such restriction or there is no such mandatory thing that you want to learn DSA. That so love in various companies, the fresher in fresher, mostly fresher roles, they may ask you DSA knowledge. But if you're an experience, you don't need to learn DSA, that is not mandatory. And then all the data we are storing in a real world, so it may not be a small data, it would be a huge amount of data which comprises of a huge volume huge velocity and a huge variety. How we can store all that huge amount of data is in lines of Hadoop. Now, based on Hadoop uh, ecosystem, we have a data lake, which is HDFS. And whenever we are storing the data, we want to process the data. Even in SQL, we will be learning the same thing. We will be having data definition language. We will be creating the data. And then we will be having data manipulation. We can change the column names and all that. And then we are able to perform data retrieval operation if you want we can retrieve the data. So whenever we are retrieving the data, the data retrieval may be slow. If the data is increasing in your SQL, the data retrieval is going to be slow. For that reason, we have various data. What is that uh, optimization techniques we have it while we are retrieving it in order to make your retrieval quick. We have various optimization techniques like, sub like subquery, indexing and all this. Now, so in order to overcome that issue, so we got a Hadoop related ecosystem. With Hadoop, we have a data lake which is HDFS. We are able to store all the data in our HDFS. And in order to make your processing better, we got MapReduce, we got Yarn and all that. So we are able to perform better pre-processing. And even like if you are trying to perform processing, like instead of MapReduce, even you are able to knock the door of your Apache Spark. So by using Spark as well, you are able to perform various processing techniques. We are able to perform it. And now whenever you are going for it, okay, I want to have a structured data. Now how do a HDFS is a data lake. I want a structured data in my big data environment. You'll be learning high. And no, I wanted no SQL DB. Un means like uh, where, where there is no schema, where you store the data in a key value pair or a graph based representation, where you will be storing. You can store it in a MongoDB representation. 
Now, this skill set are important. Like uh, one, you are learning a big data skill set. One, you are learning the basic pillars where you can do data lake operation, data warehousing operations, and you are able to perform your ETL operations. And apart from it, now you want to you are doing all this operation. Now, SQL is your traditional data warehouse. Now, is there any mind blowing data warehouse? Yes, there is a mind blowing data warehouse, which is a Snowflake. So, Snowflake is one of the popular on-demand data warehouse, majority of the jobs just learning data, Snowflake itself, people are able to get into data engineering. Course. Snowflake is very simple like your SQL. If you know SQL, learning Snowflake is not that big difficult. It's very easy to master it. And once you completed Snowflake, now all the data we are storing may not do it in our laptops or on, on premise, we will be doing on cloud. So we need to do various cloud based operation. If you take it, I will be doing data ingestion operations. We need to do various, uh, what is that, uh, map reduce operations, or we can say various processing operations, how we can do it. We need to have a cloud based knowledge like AWS. And even we got Azure Databricks, so we'll be learning about Databricks and Azure Databricks. And in order to perform streaming operation, we will be using the combination of Apache. So we'll be using this particular tools. Snowflake, AWS, Apache Kafka, Airflow, and even your Databricks and Azure Databricks. We will be using all these applications related to streaming and cloud-based uh, implementation. Now, this is the overall roadmap I think one need to learn to get into a data engineering profile. So in this roadmap, we have data warehousing concept, data lake concept, we have a big data concept, and finally streaming concept, streaming with cloud-based platform. Overall four things, so four things and four different projects. That going to create a huge amount of weightage in your data engineering profile, as I said. So there is a simple formula. So one, you need to have a job-ready content, I'm calling it as JRC, job-ready content. And the second, you need to have a real-time projects, or we can call it as portfolio. And the third one, you need to have a proper convincing skills. So how to speak in your interviews. This is a three simple combo. So in case if you are looking for this combo, if you are looking for a data engineering program, a dedicated mentor driven program, yes. So we are hosting data engineering career transition program which comprises of data structures and algorithms with a remote internship. So in case, if you are willing to join, so all the content which I showcased here, we will be learning this entire content. And once we learned all this content, I will be demonstrating end-to-end -end projects. And once you learn that, you will be working on end-to-end -end projects and you build a portfolio, you can place that in your resume. And once you completed this end-to-end -end projects, then we go through your resume building process, LinkedIn optimization process, and job portal optimization process. And if you are looking for an assistance, how to speak related to data engineering interviews or even a data and analytic interview, it means like by going into data engineering, you can target even data analytics. If you are planning to move into data analytic or data engineering, I'll be helping you on how to crack interviews related to data analytics or data engineering how to build resume, how to speak on them, how to explain about yourself, all this I will be assisting you. Now, in case if you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one call, means like before getting into data engineering, so you are confused whether to go with data engineering, data analytic, whatever the profile is, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I go through your background and I assist you on data engineering or data analytics. But mostly, if you are planning to data engineering, I will be saying it's a very good option. So data engineering is one of the on-demand jobs in the market. So you can target data engineering profile. It's a very good job profile. And uh, if you are looking for one-on-one, -on -one, the links are in the description. If you want to know more about this roadmap and the agenda, what we are covering in data engineering career transition, the link is in the description. So look, look onto it, take a call, and book a one-on-one -on -one call. Thank you so much. See you in our next.